<coughs> no nation wants war. Nowadays, nobody doubts that if a new world war started, it would inevitably be a nuclear one. Its consequences would be fatal for many countries and peoples of the world. The United States must leave Vietnam, must withdraw its forces. First and foremost, it must immediately and unconditionally stop the bombing of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. No statements about readiness to find a peaceful solution of the Vietnamese question can sound convincing unless this is done. Such states, the United Nations cannot overlook these crimes. The Security Council has already addressed itself to the government of Israel with a demand that it ensure the safety, well-being and security of the population in the occupied regions. The resolution is in itself an accusation of the aggressor. The United Nations must compel Israel to respect international laws. Those who mastermind and commit crimes on the occupied territories of the Arab countries must be severely called to account, and this will be done by the peoples of the world. Attempts to consolidate the fruits of aggression will in the long run backfire against Israel and its people. By occupying territories of the United Arab Republic, Jordan and Syria, Israel continues to challenge the United Nations and all peace-loving states. This is why the main task of this assembly is to condemn the aggressor and take steps for an immediate withdrawal of Israeli troops behind the armistice lines. In other words, This fact had been directly communicated to the Syrian and Egyptian governments. The excuse had been shattered. In respect to the request for a condemnation, I give a simple answer to the Soviet government. That government's record in the stimulation of the arms race, in the paralysis of the Security Council, in the encouragement throughout the Arab world of unfounded suspicion of Israel's intentions, the constant refusal to say a single word of criticism at any time, any criticism of declarations threatening the violent overthrow of Israel's sovereignty and existence, all this gravely undermines your claims to objectivity. You come here in our eyes 
not as a judge or as a prosecutor, but rather as a legitimate object of international criticism for the part that you have played in the somber events which have brought our region to a point of explosive tension. If the Soviet Union had made an equal distribution of its friendship amongst the peoples of the Middle East, if it had refrained from exploiting regional tensions for the purposes of global policy, if it had stood in even-handed devotion to the legitimate interests of all states, then the crisis which now commands our attention and anxiety would never have occurred. I recognize the representative of the United Kingdom in exercise of right of reply. Do not believe that our debate is furthered by discussing in this special assembly irrelevant subjects, Vietnam, Cuba, the Dominican Republic, and Germany. Tomorrow, I shall deal with the real question on our agenda, which is the need for a just and stable peace in the Middle East so ardently desired by all people of the world. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs>